So welcome everyone to this session, Testing Android App Bundle with APM by Masayuki. We are glad that Masayuki could join us today. Uh, thanks, Chairman, and uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to my session. Uh, tonight, I'm talking about testing Android App Bundle with APM. Let me first talk about uh, myself. Uh, my name is Masayuki Wakizaka uh, from Japan. I live in, in Siga Prefecture, which is uh, next to Kyoto Prefecture. Um, I work as a software engineer who develops a uh, magic part, and I do sometimes um, contribute to um, open source projects such as APM or um, Chrome Driver, which is a part of a uh, Chromium project. And when I have uh, spare time, I uh, like to play um, tennis. So uh, before uh, talking about um, main topics today, uh, let me introduce our, our product a little bit, uh, MagicPad. Uh, this is a um, test automated service which supports, um, how do I say, um, uh, both web applications and mobile applications. And uh, in our, uh, as a sort of core uh, libraries, we um, use uh, Zenim and the PIM inside our magic pod. And um, we are very uh, fortunate, uh, you know, um, given that uh, test automation uh, technology stack evolved in recent years, we, um, you know, produce our product. And um, also we do some more, uh, we might be to some company to be a, a sponsor of as any more pay up in project, we sometimes um, contribute to test automation um, community in a way um, like submitting their pull requests or having a community event. And our tonight topics, I have three topics. Um, why it's under the bundle and how we test under the bundle with APM and also um, testing with different languages. So first theory, uh, why is under the bundle? Um, this is a um, uh, file format. Um, you know, previously, you, 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 some of you have already tried um, Android application testing with Appium. Uh, in that case, you have used to use um, .apk file uh, extension and uh, the when it comes to Android app bundle file, uh, this file has um, .aap uh, file extension, and this is a file format um, that includes all of your applications uh, compiled code and resources. And uh, given the Android app bundle, uh, you know, which uploaded uh, to Google Play. Uh, Google Play will um, generate um, optimized APK um, based on uh, the device spec of uh, user device and also uh, signs the generated APK and distributes it to uh, under the users. And then the new applications have been required to publish with this uh, under the bundle format on Google Play since um, last month. So also the file format has been introduced since uh, 2018. Um, this uh, file format under the bundle um, attracts more attention uh, these days. So why under the bundle um, is introduced? It's because um, size matters. Uh, the slide here um, indicates, uh, um, you know, if the size of uh, your Android application increases, um, you, you know, it takes a long time to download from Google Play and also um, you'll be hesitated to update your Android application if the size of your Android application to, is too large. And uh, this sounds something like a uh, downside, but it's actually 
um, trade-off is because as a number of your as a number of uh, features uh, your Android application has you know increases. Uh, it also you know increases uh, your the size of your Android application. So um, how Android app bundle works? Uh, here, let me compare it with Universal APK. Suppose a developer uploads a Universal APK to Google Play. Um, user simply downloads the um, Universal APK from uh, Google Play. Therefore, the size of the size of the Android application uh, doesn't change. But when it comes to Android app bundle, uh, in this case, Google Play uh, will generate an um, optimized size of APK um, in terms of size, and uh, uh, it will be it will be based on the device spec of your of the uh, user device, uh, and also Google Play, you know, signs the generated APK file instead of um, developers. Um, so in this way, um, group, um, under the boundary can save the disk usage of, um, you know, under the device. And um, according to Google, uh, it can save an um, average of 35% uh, of uh, disk usage uh, compared to um, universal APK. So next topic uh, is that uh, how we test under the bundle with Appium. Uh, I will, uh, you know, it, it consists of four steps. And after explaining the four steps, uh, I will bring to my demonstration. So first of all, uh, you prepare a bundle tool. This is a tool to manipulate um, things related to under the bundle. And uh, by uh, with this tool, you can also, uh, for example, generate an APK set archive file, which I will explain later. And also you can install an APK set archive and uh, you can also um, extract the device spec of um, of the of your Android real device or Android emulator um, by you know by using this device spec um, extracted by bundle tool you can optimize uh, your you know Android the resources of your Android application. And you can download it from the GitHub page of um, Google organization. But the second step, you generate an APK set archive from uh, under the bundle file. And uh, <clears throat> an APK set archive is, um, you know, file format, which has uh, .apks uh, uh, file extension. And this contains a set of .apk files that is split um, based on device uh, specification like architecture, uh, device architecture or device language or screen resolution or other device specific features. Um, in order to generate um, APK set archive file, you issue Java uh, JR command and you special build APKS and you specify uh, the path to your Android uh, app bundle file. And also you need to specify the output, the path to your uh, path to the uh, APK set archive file, which should be the output of this command. And when you test, um, you know, Android app bundle uh, in the form of uh, APK set archive file, um, you need to sign the output of this command, I mean the APK set archive file. So you need to specify the path to your key store file, and you need to uh, specify the key areas, 
And also, you need to specify the password of the keystore file. <clears throat> and uh, as a third step, you start your Appium server. And but before starting your Appium server, you need to set up your path environment variable. And uh, in this uh, in this case, you need to add the path to your uh, bundle tool to the path uh, to the path environment variable. And then the other fourth step, you set up your capability. And the one important capability here is app capability, uh, which should be the path to your APK set archive file. And by specifying this capability, Appium will installs, uh, Appium installs your um, APK set archive and, uh, based on your device specification. In other words, you know, Appium will optimize uh, the uh, how do I say um, the resource of the of your Android application as the Google Play does. So uh, let's move on my um, demonstration uh, how to test Android app under with Appium. And in this demonstration, I will simply uh, launch my Android uh, demo application. And here I have launched um, emulator, my emulator here. And uh, I have, uh, I hope you can see this. I have my um, under the bundle file here. And this is my bundle tool. And I have key store file here. And this is my test script. And uh, in this demonstration, I will use um, JavaScript language, and but also you can use other, um, you know, language bindings such as Java, uh, Python, or Ruby, or whatever you like. So first of all, we you know generate um, APK set archive file. It takes a uh, bit moment, and I have successfully generated um, APK set archive file. And there's uh, just second step by, you know, set up my path uh, environment variable. I have added uh, the path to bundle two to the path environment variable. And then I start my Appium server. So, and uh, before starting my test script, I will let um, check my test script. So one, if as I, ex as I explained, one important capability is app capability here. And this should be the path to the um, APK set archive file. So let's begin. Oh no. <laughs> Appium server is, you know, establishing um, Appium session, and I have successfully launched, um, you know, my demo application here. And uh, you can issue any click or swipe or whatever you want. So that's all of my demonstration. Simple demonstration. By the way, I, uh, I'm using Mbam Mac. And let's move into our final topic, testing with different languages. Um, some of you have already tried uh, testing with different languages, but um, unlike um, testing with a um, APK file, you need to have a trick to a sort of trick to test with different languages because um, you know API only installs the minimum set of resources based on your um, device spec. Um, in other words, um, Appium respects the behavior of um, Android app bundle, or I mean, should I say Google Pay? And I uh, explain here, uh, introduce here uh, three approaches uh, to achieve. Uh, each of them have pros and cons, and uh, you can choose 
um, any of them uh, based on your uh, demand, or you can uh, make a new one if you need. The first approach is to use who says to um, capability. This is um, pretty simple. You just specify who reset to capability here in addition to um, language and local capabilities. And um, that's very simple, that's all. But uh, some of you have already noticed that this approach um, stops the application, clears application data, and uninstalls application before and under, under after test. Um, some of you, you know, this might sound like um, downside uh, for some of you, but this is a way that the uh, project suggests. And the second approach is to install under the, under the bundle by yourself. Uh, this approach consists of two steps. And the first one is to use bundle two to install your uh, APK set archive file. And so this should be after generating um, APK set archive uh, from your uh, under the bundle file. And in order to install um, APK set archive, uh, you issue Java JL command um, and is, you, you know, install APKS and you should specify the path to your um, APK set archive file. And also don't forget to specify the, you know, device ID of your Android device uh, where you install um, your Android application. And now that this is, um, by issuing this command, you, you will install all resources of your Android application. So it can consume more uh, disk space of your Android device. And the second step you specify, you use app package and app activity um, instead of app um, capability. Um, by specifying these capabilities, Appium um, assumes, <coughs> assumes that you have already installed uh, your Android application in your uh, into your Android device. So Appium tries to uh, simply launch um, your Android application in your device. So the third one is to change diverse language before a PM test. Um, this approach consists of three steps and this can be um, complicated to automate. And um, I say um, this can be for um, experienced PM users. And um, I, I will explain in, in a way idea levels of how to achieve this approach uh, for, for ease of keeping, uh, for ease of explanation. Um, the, at the first step, you prepare a PM setting APK uh, file. You can obtain it from the GitHub page of a PM project. With this, um, under the, uh, with this uh, PM setting APK file, you can, uh, you can change uh, system setting of your Android device, for example, uh, device setting, Bluetooth setting, or uh, Wi-Fi setting, or whatever. And uh, this is the first step. And the uh, second step, um, you change uh, device language by issuing three ADB commands. At the first ADB commands, you uh, install this APK set setting APK file. By the way, this is um, Android application. And the uh, second step, you uh, second ADB command, you you know start your the setting application, and also uh, don't forget to no I mean the other third ADB command, you change your device language to Japanese. And then at the third step, um, you start your PM testing with without who reset to capability. 
So this is a comparison page uh, of three approaches um, to change device languages. Uh, I'm learning a lot of time, so I will probably share this slide later. So please check out it same later. And in conclusion, I uh, explained how to automate under the bundle with Appium. And uh, you need to keep in mind that you need to integrate bundle tool in your tool chain uh, to test your under the under a bundle file. And also you need to consider uh, how to change your device language. Um, that's all for my uh, talk. Thank you for um, listening. Thank you, Masayuki. Uh, it was very enlightening and very nice. Um, so there are a few questions from audience. Um, if you want to see them, you can minimize Zoom and go to question and answer uh, Q&A. Or if you want, I can read that for you. Uh, I, I will do the QA. Compensant I became with the period in the dark. There won't be any impact on the court. How about assets? With the uh, compressed assets lower the uh, quality. Mm. I don't, I'm, I'm not sure about, you know, uh, I don't know much about compressed, uh, compressing, compressed assets, but the, uh, I can say that um, in this, in this, uh, in my presentation, I, I think I don't compress any, anything APK, uh, you know, we, we just, and I, I explained how to, you know, generate an um, APK set archive file from under the bundle. And um, this is, uh, this consists of, um, you know, set of APK file uh, generated, generated from under the bundle. So I, I'm, I don't think it, you know, uh, any impact, any impact on this approach. Can I, did I answer the question? I think so. So oh, the answer, the question was, will it as uh, will it affect the quality of the assets? The answer is no, because it's an official tool by Google. Yes. So I'm marking it as done. There is uh, possibly no other question. <laughs> mm -hmm. And yeah, the, we have one more uh, question from uh, Sravanan. He says, does all the versions of APM support APKs? Mm, sorry, I'm not much, I don't know much about the, which, from which version of APM support dot APKs, uh, but the, I can say that um, it, it is introduced, uh, the, the format here under the bundle file format is introduced two years, about three years ago. And uh, one of the uh, APM committer has worked on the, you know, how to, you know, support under the bundle around two, two years ago. So I think, you know, um, how do I say, uh, you know, a pretty, pretty old version of APM version can probably can support uh, under the bundle, probably two or three years ago. I think that answers the uh, question. The answer is the very old versions older than two years ago will not support it. But some, if the version is bef before two years old, I mean, after within less last two years, it will support it. Uh, and yes, thank you. if you are interested, you can go to GitHub and mm -hmm. there is a commit which which uh, which is about support version, and I I personally use this and at least from version eighteen when I was last using it it was supported eighteen or nineteen. Currently we are on twenty one one twenty one dot twenty one. It mm -hmm. definitely supports that. So that's answered. 
Yes. By the way, if doesn't answer that your question, you are free to ask a follow up question. Yeah. We'll wait for uh, one more minute for uh, for people to think more about it. And if there's no questions, we'll move to Hangouts table wherein people can more freely speak to our speaker without uh, without waiting for typing their questions and answering it. So there is a comment, nice speaker and nice host. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Rahul. And thanks for the comment about the host, which doesn't need any. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thank you to, for uh, accepting my proposal as well. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining in. Um, and thanks, Masayuki, for uh, being with us today.